Football Manager. It's a game that I may have pumped a few hours into over the years. Everyone wants to create a team that can win trophies, but trebles, quadruples, quintuples, even sextuples, those are reserved for the creme de la creme of football manager. And unless you're Jay from the Inbetweeners, there isn't really a way to complete FM. What drives me is winning trophies, turning a profit, and building a team of five-star players. This video teaches you the fundamentals of football manager so that you can do that too. Okay, so there is a lot of information in this video and I promise to waste as little time as possible. I'll also be sure to put a timestamp to each chapter in the description down below so that you can skip to the section that you may need. Make sure you let me know what I forgot in the comments down below. Ah, sh here we go again. When starting a new save, you have to select the countries that you want to sim alongside your game. The more countries, the slower it can be to sim. I manage that by only selecting the top division in the other major footballing nations, but including lower divisions in the nation that I'm managing in. Staff responsibilities dictate how much time you'll spend micromanaging your team. I keep the major responsibilities for myself and delegate most of the training, the management of youth teams, the scouting, and the press conferences to my assistant manager. I found coaching style to have only moderate impact. Just pick what you'll be primarily focusing on and you should be fine. Once you get into the game, you'll likely first look at the squad and the tactics that you'll employ with the players at your disposal. I know Arsenal squad already, so let's jump right into the tactics. Tactics can be finicky, especially for new players. For some people, this is the crux of the game. For others, it's the bane of their existence. This may be a controversial thing to say, but if you're a new player, I highly recommend taking a tactic off a website like FM Base. The tactical experts have dozens of great downloads for you to plug and play with. This will allow you to learn the ins and outs of the game and how to properly squad build without getting sacked because of your tactical ineptitude. The same goes for shortlists, skins, and logos. FM Scout, FM Base, and even the Steam Workshop are a great place to use community tools to make the game a little easier. When looking at your squad, the single most important thing that I believe you can do as a manager is to take care of your contracts. Check on when your players' contracts are expiring. If they expire in the next two years, you have a choice. Sell them, or re-sign them ASAP. We'll touch on this again later. Another important factor when squad building is your league's homegrown rule. The Premier League requires 8 players trained in England. The Europa and Champions League require 4 players trained at the club, 8 players trained in the nation, and at least 2 goalkeepers. Dark blue indicates homegrown in the nation. Light blue is homegrown at the club. These rules change when Brexit comes into effect. Don't get caught out by this. It's a true challenge to build a quality squad with four club homegrown players. Manage this by always signing all of your youth candidate players. This ensures your under 18s always has a full squad and can find success in their youth league and cup. You can find these signed youth players in your development center. This is your under 23s and under 18 squads. Sort your youth squads by their highest potential to get an idea of your homegrown wonder kids. I always keep a couple of youngsters in my main squad and ensure that they're being mentored by my senior squad players. This helps them develop the necessary player traits to succeed in future seasons. Managing staff is something that I have found to be less intuitive from earlier renditions of Football Manager. Still, it's a critical element to the game. Like your players, your staff need high skill ratings. Where possible, you should try to promote from within your own club. If their ratings aren't up to snuff, then mutually terminate their contracts at the start of your save and replace them with suitable candidates by placing adverts or searching manually. You can find their responsibilities in the training tab. I try to make sure that none of the coaches have a heavy workload. Each coach should only be in charge of one training element. When you have good coaches with the right balance, you should have all coach ratings at 5 star with light or average workload. 
scouting and recruitment is my favorite part of Football Manager. Here's an example on how to do this effectively. I've identified a weakness in my squad, quality defenders. By searching for a young defender, I can narrow down what I'm looking for and begin scouting the targets that I have in mind. You can either inquire or immediately go in for a bid. To offset an incoming transfer, I always attempt to dump a player in the transfer market. You don't want to be overloaded in any position or to be tight with your wage budget. A good rule of thumb is a main player and a quality rotation option in all 11 spots on the field. I also like to keep at least one under 23 player as a backup rotation option just in case of an injury crisis. Here, Benfica responded to my transfer interest. Now the negotiations begin. In FM, I always negotiate. If a team, player, or board accepts something immediately, I'm upset. My goal is to always get the best bargain that I can. In almost any contract negotiation or any transfer negotiation, I am going to go back and forth until I'm on my last chance. Sometimes the negotiations stretch your finances thin. You're able to adjust your resource allocation in the scouting tab under budget adjustment. Nice. Once a player is signed, you want to make sure you register him in your squad, assign his number, and then ask a squad leader to integrate him in the club. Player morale is a critical component of Football Manager. Use any opportunity following a win or while leading comfortably at halftime to boost your player's morale. You should attempt to talk to players when you can. For instance, after they're injured, after they've gained an international cap, or even through a captain with good leadership skills in order to build positive relationships with your players. Occasionally, players will yell at you for congratulating them on their international cap or goal. Take that as the price of doing business and move on. When possible, you should start preparing for the winter transfer window in the summer. Search for players who have one year left in their contract. Not only are these potentially good deals in the summer transfer window, but once they have six months remaining on their contract on December 31st, you may approach them to sign them for free. You do not want this happening to your players if it can be prevented. You should be renewing contracts in the summer. My suggestion is to never let a player that you like have less than 1.5 years remaining on their contract. Once you get to the winter transfer window, you can sign quality players for free. This is an excellent way to make money. Signing these players on three to four year contracts is essentially a way to build cheap liquidity. As long as you actually use these players, you can move them on in one or two seasons and anything you sell them for is a profit. I typically make few transfers during the winter transfer window. It can tend to disrupt the squad too much. In this transfer window, I actually dump Ceballos back to his parent club and promote Joe Willock to build a little more room in my wage budget. I don't always cave to players who are looking to upgrade their contract, but if they are a youth player who is transitioning to a first team regular and I know they will be a big part of my future, more often than not, I will offer them that upgraded contract. It's always worth negotiating every penny that you can out of their agent. Things to look out for when negotiating contracts are bad clauses like big sell-on fees, giant yearly wage rises, and big jumps in salary after reaching a certain amount of games played in the league or international caps. Pre-game and in-game management is largely about squad rotation, exploiting opponent weaknesses, and the in-game shouts. In this example, which is the FA Cup Final, it's a North London Derby. My rule of thumb is to not select a player if he's below 91% fitness, unless it's a cup final or big match. This aids in minimizing your injury risk to players. In-game coaching shouts are an interesting addition. 
I find that there are basically three that work without fail. Those are get creative, show some passion, and demand more. Set pieces should never be neglected in your tactics and in your training. Watch in these two cup finals how all three of the goals that I generate come from set pieces. The signing of Ruben Diaz proves dividends as he scores a critical header for me in the FA Cup final. And without sounding too conceited, does this Torreira goal remind anyone else of the Gerard Screamer against West Ham in Cardiff many years ago? Pre-game, it's always important to pick the appropriate team talk. However, you should also address players by position with the shout, I have faith in you, get out there and make a difference. This tends to give a positive response more often than not. If this penalty was given against my defender, I would probably jump out of my parents' basement window. Scum save to prevent that embarrassment from happening to you. And there you are, a double in my first season in charge. Wow! Summer management starts by checking in to see where your club is at financially. See where your club is making money. Upgrade your scouting budget if you have the finances to. Ensure your club is passing financial fair play, and then prepare to make difficult squad decisions. When you're looking at a player's stats, go to their player profile and then click on history. The most telling stat is their average rating, which you want to be somewhere above a 7. I always look for my strikers to be as close to one goal per start as possible. In this particular season, I know that Obama Yang is out of contract, so after a strong goal scoring season, I dump him for what I can. It's less than what I hope for, but it's better than nothing. I do feel a little guilty about selling club legends, but ultimately, it's important to balance the budgets. At this point in the season, the board will want to know your club vision going forward into the next season. This particular feature is relatively new to Football Manager, so I'm not sure of the exact meta, but I do try to tie myself to as few tactics, contract clauses, and trophies as possible. Set those expectations low to prevent getting sacked, and then smash them out of the park with a team that has an average age of 16. Feel out your squad. You want a determined group, so don't undersell them, but don't promise them the moon either, because if you have a slow start to the season, they'll quickly turn their back on you. This summer, in addition to selling Aubameyang, I also sell Elneny and Mkhitaryan. This helps offset the purchase of Timo Werner. With the summer additions of William Saliba, Arangiz, and Werner, my squad is both younger and stronger without posting an outrageous financial loss. To be honest, this just scratches the surface. With over 5,000 hours of gameplay under my belt, I'm still learning new things and that will be the same for you. I find the coolest part about Football Manager is learning through your own mistakes and the feeling of accomplishment when you've built a dynasty on your own. I've tried not to ruin that experience by giving away too much information. This should just help you get started and allow you to understand the mechanics to at least get off on the right foot. Let me know what team you're going to manage in your first save in the comments down below and I'll see if I can help scout the players that you need to get started. I'll also be continuing on with this exact Arsenal team in a 10 season YouTube series. If you're interested in watching the success of this Arsenal team in the years to come, subscribe to Millennial Gaming so that you can be notified of the new content as it's posted. Guys, thanks for watching and enjoy your save.